In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the transfer function of thermal systems. So let's see what we are going to cover in this lecture first. So we will be discussing about the elements of thermal system. So we'll see what are the different elements of any thermal system that we can determine in order to model that thermal system. Then we'll discuss about the transfer function of a thermal system. So let's start. We know that in thermal system, it involves the heat transfer from one substance to another substance. Then there are a different mode of heat transfer that is conduction, convection and radiation. Whenever we want to model any thermal system, we need to find these two quantity. One is called as thermal resistance and second one is called as thermal capacitance. So if we want to model any thermal system, these are two important quantity that we need to focus on. So here in our discussion, we are going to consider only two mode of heat transfer that is conduction and convection. So let's determine what is thermal resistance. So thermal resistance is a resistance to heat flow. So we can define it as thermal resistance is a measure of temperature difference by which an object or a material resists heat flow. So it is analogous to electrical resistance, but here it resists the heat flow. So let's see how we can uh, get this uh, thermal resistance. So consider a body which is having uh, two surfaces at different temperatures so consider this surface at temperature theta 1 and this surface at temperature theta 2 and this object or substance is having length l and it is having a cross sectional area a so we can write the heat transfer from surface 1 to surface 2 as q is equal to theta 1 minus theta 2 divided by the resistance of this substance. So this resistance here is nothing but the thermal resistance. So this thermal resistance depends upon the type of heat transfer. So if it is conduction, we can write this thermal resistance as R is equal to L by A into K. So here L is length, A is again the cross sectional area and K is thermal conductivity of this substance or system. And for convection, this R is equal to 1 by A into H. So A is again cross sectional area and H is the coefficient of convection. So in this way, we can determine the thermal resistance and based on that, we can determine what is the heat flow rate. Next is thermal capacitance. So thermal capacitance is a measure of how much heat an object can store. So it is a heat storing a capacity of any substance or any object or any material. So we can consider here that we are having an object and we are providing heat to it. Say that heat is Q. Now this initially this object will be having some temperature say that is theta 1. So now as we start providing heat to this substance, or this object so if it is having a heat storage capacity so its temperature will going to rise so what is going to happen with this theta one with respect to time it will going to change and of course when we are adding heat to this object this temperature is going to increase so here we can define this capacitance as the heat flow rate is proportional to the change in temperature of the substance or of the object so if we remove this proportionality sign we will be having q is equal to c into d theta 1 by dt so here this c is nothing but thermal capacitance now if we want to find thermal capacitance we can find it as c is equal to m into cp so here m is mass of the object And Cp is specific heat capacity of that object.
So C P is a specific heat capacity of the object. So if we know the mass of the object, specific heat capacity of the object, so we can determine the thermal capacitance. So these are two important elements that we need to determine in case of modeling any thermal system. So how we are going to use these two properties to model the thermal system? So based on thermal resistance, we need to find how much is the heat flow rate, and also based on thermal capacitance, we need to find how much is the heat storage. So based on energy balance, we can write heat in is equal to heat out plus heat storage or heat stored. So suppose heat in is QI, so we will be having heat out as QO and that will be based on this resistance or thermal resistance plus heat stored say it is QS and this heat stored will depend upon the capacitance of that object. So in this way we can get the mathematical equation related to that thermal system and later on by applying Laplace transform we can get the transfer function of that system. So let's take an example to understand this concept. So question for this example is in a given system electric heating element is provided in the tank. So that heating element we are having here as a heater and it is used to heat the water that is inside this tank and this tank is insulated in order to reduce the heat to the surrounding so here we are having a tank body that is insulated in order to reduce the heat loss to the surrounding then there is no heat storage in the insulation this insulation is not going to store any heat and also water in this tank is perfectly mixed so we are having a uniform temperature inside this tank of the water so we need to determine the transfer function of this system so here situation is like we are having a heater which is heating this water and water is coming to this system through this inlet and it is going out of the system from this outlet so inlet water temperature is theta i outlet water temperature is theta o and both are in of course degree celsius then we are having surrounding temperature as theta so let's write all these notation here so we are having theta i is equal to inlet temperature of water Similarly, theta O is outlet outlet temperature of water. Theta is the surrounding temperature. Other thing we can define as like uh, Q is equal to heat flow rate from heater so it is heat flow rate from heater so this is heat flow in to the system next we will be having heat out so it is a heat flow to the surrounding that we are going to determine based on thermal resistance Similarly, we will be having a heat storage. So it will be heat flow to the water. So of course, this will be the heat that water molecule will take up and because of that water temperature will going to rise. Now other thing we can define here as C, we can say it is a thermal capacitance of the system. And similarly, we can write R as thermal resistance of the system. So now let's determine various heat flow due to thermal resistance and thermal capacitance. So let's find first rate of heat flow in water. 
so this will be the heat that will be taken up by the water molecule to rise its temperature so it will be given by based on thermal capacitance so we know that that heat flow rate we write as qs here and it will be equal to c into d theta o by dt so here the temperature is changing from theta i to theta o so this theta o is rising with respect to time so this is the first equation similarly we are having second equation which will be based on thermal resistance so that will be rate of heat flow to the surrounding through tank insulation So it will be Q O, and that will be equal to theta O minus theta I divided by R. So R is here thermal resistance. So this is equation number two. Now we will be writing energy balance equation here to get the system equation. So energy balance here will be it will be Q in is equal to Q out plus Q storage or stored. So here Q in is Q only. Q out we got as theta O minus theta I divided by R plus Q S we got as C into D theta O by D T. So now this equation we can write as Theta O divided by R minus theta I divided by R plus C into D theta O by D T. So from this equation, we can neglect this term as it is theta I, which is constant, and here it will be having a lower value compared to uh, theta O. And based on uh, resistance, which will be more, so this value will be having a negligible effect on our overall equation. So based on that, we can relax this term here. So we will be having Q is equal to theta O by R plus C into D theta O by D T. So this is the system equation. Now, in order to get the transfer function, we need to take Laplace of this equation. So let's do it here. So by taking Laplace of equation number three, so now we will be having Q will be written as QS, and that is equal to, and on right hand side we are having theta O. So it is a variable, and R will be constant. So theta O S divided by R we will be having, then plus C into. Again, we are having a differential term, so we know that how we can take the Laplace of this one. So it will be S into theta O S. So now from this equation, we can take theta O S outside, and we will be having in bracket one by R. Plus C into S in bracket theta O of S. So now here theta O is the output and theta S is the input. So we can write a transfer function of this system as output that is theta O of S divided by input that is theta S is equal to. So it will be one upon this bracket that we are having here. So it will be one by R plus C into S, and that is equal to. We can also rewrite it as R by one plus R into C into S. So this is the transfer function of this thermal system. So what I did here, I just cross multiplied this R and rewrite this expression in this way. So this is how we can determine the transfer function for any thermal system by determining. The heat flow rate based on thermal capacitance and heat flow rate based on thermal resistance. So.
so here we'll end but before that let's uh, discuss what we have studied so we saw what are the different elements that are involved in determining the mathematical model of the thermal system so that are thermal resistance and thermal capacitance and then after that we took this example to find the transfer function of given thermal system so with this we'll end here